Hi, my name is Tim and I'm an economist at the Reserve Bank of Australia. In this video, I'll give a brief summary of current economic conditions and an overview of the bank's recent monetary policy decision from February. This information is drawn from the Reserve Bank's Statement on Monetary Policy and is aimed at high school economics students. Let's start by focusing on economic growth in Australia. Economic growth is measured by GDP and the black line shows the quarterly growth rate of Australia's GDP over the past few years. If we focus on recent developments, it shows that Australia's economic growth slowed over 2023. It can be helpful to break down GDP into different parts to better understand what is driving this growth. We can break GDP down into contributions from per capita growth and population growth. If we focus on the yellow bars, this represents real GDP per capita. GDP per capita is the total value of GDP divided by the population. While the term real means we are taking into account the effect of inflation. What it shows is that real GDP per capita declined over 2023. This measure is one way of understanding how living standards in Australia have changed. When real GDP per capita is lower, it generally suggests that people's ability to purchase goods and services has decreased. So why has GDP growth slowed? The primary driver has been weak growth in household consumption. High inflation, higher interest rates and tax payments have weighed on households' incomes and led people to cut back on their spending. And we can take a closer look at household incomes to get a better idea of this. Real household disposable income is a measure of people's income that is available for them to spend or save after deducting tax and interest payments and adjusting for inflation. Year-ended growth in real household disposable income, the black line, has been negative for more than a year. This means that real household disposable incomes have been declining over this period. The coloured bars show the contribution of different factors to household income growth. The red bar shows labour income, or people's wages and salaries, and it has grown strongly, boosting people's disposable incomes. However, this growth has been more than offset by broader cost of living pressures that have reduced people's disposable income. These things include high inflation, the dark blue bars, strong growth in tax payments, the light blue bars, and higher net interest payments from higher interest rates, the yellow bars. As a result, this has put pressure on household budgets, and many households have responded to these pressures by reducing their spending. Switching our focus to spending and consumption now, the blue line represents household spending on goods, such as clothing and footwear, and the red line shows consumption of services, such as eating out and entertainment activities. Both are shown as an index which helps us compare the level of consumption now to what it was in the past. In aggregate, households are spending less on goods than they were a year ago, which you can see with the blue line drifting lower, while consumption of services has been more resilient. Households have also responded by saving less, and in some cases drawing down their stock of savings. While consumption has been the main driver of slower economic growth, there have been some other components of GDP that have partly offset this. These include strong growth in business investment, public sector spending, and spending by international students and tourists which make up part of our services exports. I want to turn to the labour market now, which is another important economic indicator. Australia's labour market remains tight, but conditions have continued to ease over recent months. The unemployment rate, the blue line, and the underemployment rate, the purple line, have both increased by around half a percentage point since late 2022. But you can see that this is from historically low levels. The underutilisation rate, which is the green line here, is the sum of the unemployment and underemployment rates and has also edged up further. Digging a bit deeper, a range of other indicators are also pointing to demand for labour growing a bit more gradually in response to slower economic growth. And at the same time, the supply of labour has increased. Two factors have contributed to the increase in labour supply. First, population growth has been relatively high, reflecting people moving to Australia from overseas. Second, the labour force participation rate, which is the share of the working age population in the labour force, shown by the purple line, has remained near record highs. Even though conditions have eased somewhat, the bank's assessment of the labour market is that it remains tight relative to full employment. In other words, there is not much spare capacity or underutilised labour in the economy. 
The bank considers estimates from a suite of economic models and a wide range of labour market indicators in coming to this assessment. Some of these are shown in this graph. If we focus on the orange dots first, they show labour market outcomes in late 2022, which was when many of these measures were around their tightest levels. The blue dots show the latest available data for these same indicators. The main thing to take away from this graph is that the blue dots, or most recent data, are to the left of the orange dots, and this suggests that labour market conditions are less tight or looser than in late 2022. We can also compare the dots to what's considered normal from a historical perspective, and this is shown by the grey shaded areas that have been added here. Comparing the blue dots to the grey shaded areas, most of these labour market indicators are within or to the right of the shaded areas, which suggests they still appear tight relative to historical standards. Overall, the RBA's assessment is that the level of aggregate demand remains above the economy's capacity to supply goods and services, but the economy is moving towards a better balance. That said, this excess demand is putting upwards pressure on inflation. If we turn to inflation now, it continued to ease in the December quarter but still remains high. The Consumer Price Index, or the CPI, increased by 0.7% in the December quarter and by 4.1% over the year. This is down from 5.4% in the September quarter, which means, in year-ended terms, headline inflation has eased further. Let's take a look at how different factors have contributed to headline inflation recently. Looking first at goods, the blue bars show the contribution of selected goods to inflation. Things like groceries, alcohol and tobacco, consumer durables and new dwellings. The blue bars have become smaller over the past year, meaning that these goods are contributing less to overall inflation than before. There are two key reasons for the easing in goods price inflation. Earlier problems in global supply chains have eased, and this has reduced pressure on firms' costs and the prices they charge consumers. And on top of that, the demand for goods has also moderated. Looking now at services, the orange bars show the contribution of selected services to inflation. Things such as eating out and insurance. Services price inflation has moderated in recent quarters but remains high. This is because there is still a strong level of demand for services and there are also strong domestic cost pressures. We can also focus on specific services such as rent. The red bars show that rent alone has made a sizeable contribution to inflation recently. This is expected to persist because of ongoing tightness in rental market conditions. Turning to measures of underlying inflation which remove the effect of irregular or temporary price changes, we have further evidence of an easing in overall inflation in the December quarter. For example, trim mean inflation was 0.8% in the December quarter and 4.2% over the year, down from 5.1% over the year to the September quarter. While there are encouraging signs, the economic outlook is still highly uncertain. The RBA's central forecasts are for inflation to return to the target range of 2-3% to in 2025 and to the midpoint in 2026. Let's finish up by looking at monetary policy and the most recent decision. The Reserve Bank Board decided to leave the cash rate unchanged at 4.35% in February. The Board's decision balances the objectives of monetary policy by supporting the return of inflation to target in a reasonable time frame, with gradual easing in labour market conditions to levels consistent with full employment. The board expects that it will be some time yet before inflation is sustainably in the target range. The path of interest rates that will best ensure this will depend on the data and the evolving assessment of risks. Thanks for watching the video, and for further information, have a look at the video description where you can find links to the full statement on monetary policy. And visit our education page too, also linked in the description, for other student-focused resources.